V-twin engines have been commonly found in motorcycles basically since there have been motorcycles. And today we're going to talk about the two most common orientations found in motorcycle V-twin engines. Why? Because some of you have asked me to. So hang out with me for a few minutes while we discuss longitudinal and transverse V-twin motorcycle engines. What's up everyone? It's Alex. That's right, today's video we're going to talk about longitudinally versus transversely mounted V-twin engines in motorcycles because surprisingly a lot of you have actually asked me to talk about that. Also, I was asked to do a video on parallel twin versus boxer twin engines in motorcycles as well, which I was getting ready to do until I realized that I had already actually done a video about parallel versus V-twin versus boxer engines in the past, and I'd prefer not to repeat myself, so I'm going to link that video in a card above. If a lot of you need a deeper dive into parallel and boxer engines, I'll be happy to do that, but I did already do a video along those lines. Real quick before I forget, if you dig the video, hit the like button. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button because that tells me what kind of content to keep making for you guys. If you dislike, hit dislike. If you hate me, leave a comment. Let's do this thing. So it goes without saying that going as far back as motorcycles themselves basically, one of the most popular engine configurations for a motorcycle is the V-twin engine in one shape or another, right? To this very, very day, there are a lot of manufacturers that really focus on using V-twin engines for the majority of the motorcycles they put out. Think about brands like Harley-Davidson, Ducati, Aprilia, some KTM motorcycles, the vast majority of metric cruisers, Indian motorcycles, and by that I mean Indian Motorcycle Company, not motorcycles from India obviously, as well as Moto Guzzi. The list can go on, but needless to say there are a lot of motorcycles out there that feature a V-twin engine in one form or another. Now all V-twins are not created the same. There are two main orientations for V-twin engines and then within those there are some subcategories. The most common orientation, which we would call a standard V-twin engine or a longitudinal V-twin engine, is a motorcycle with a V-twin engine that is mounted longitudinally in the frame, meaning one cylinder forward, one cylinder backwards, in line with the frame of the motorcycle. This can come in a lot of different forms and factors. You know, for example, a lot of Ducatis feature what most people call an L-twin as opposed to a V-twin, but the engine is still in a V configuration, so it is still a type of V-twin. They call it an L-twin because of the angle, but it is still a type of V-twin. Just like Harleys tend to have a different angle of a V-twin, but it is still a V-twin engine. So whether it's an L-twin or a V-twin of differing angles, it is still a V configuration V-twin engine. The other prominent way that a V-twin will often be mounted and oriented into a motorcycle is transversely or a transverse V-twin motorcycle. This is most commonly found popularly in Moto Guzzi. There have been other examples from the past, but the biggest one to focus on for this is the Moto Guzzi or Moto Guzzi, depending on how you want to pronounce it or where you are, motorcycles. And in a transverse or transversely mounted V-twin engine, the cylinders are simply turned what you would call sideways from a standard longitudinal V-twin engine. So instead of being cylinder forward, cylinder back in the frame, they sit sideways. So you have a cylinder leaning out each side of the motorcycle, basically at a 90 degree angle of a longitudinal V-twin engine. Now for the most part, from my experience riding, neither of these is really a better way of doing it than the other. There are some different design and engineering choices that have to be made when choosing a different way to mount an engine. Because if you think about the fact that a motorcycle engine is typically made as a single piece with a transmission or is bolted up very closely to a transmission, often in the same housing, if you change the orientation of your engine, you are also going to change how you have to connect your transmission and your final drive line, etc. So I think the majority of companies have probably stuck with a longitudinal V-twin design because they just prefer that design and engineering philosophy when hooking up to transmission, final drive, whereas the transverse has a slightly different setup to it. I'm not going to get super into the details of how they both work. They both work fine, but it's a different engineering philosophy and it creates a different feeling when riding the motorcycles, which is the biggest thing I want to talk about in this video is how different the two things can really feel. Even in the world of longitudinal or standard V-twin engines, there's a lot of different ways those can feel, right? You know, a Harley-Davidson big twin does not feel the same as a Ducati engine. You know, the Rotax V-twin found in most Aprilias does not feel the same as, say, the 750 V-twin that Honda's been putting in the shadow forever. So even in longitudinal V-twins, there are a lot of different ways those engines can feel despite being mounted the same way. However, 
You will feel a massive difference if you ride almost any longitudinal or standard V-twin versus riding a transverse V-twin in say a Moto Guzzi. So let's just take for example a Suzuki SV650X, which is the kind of cafe styled, cafe oriented version of an SV650 and something like a Moto Guzzi, Moto Guzzi V7 Cafe, right? These two motorcycles are going to have a similar philosophy. They're both going to be nice handling, torquey motorcycles of a similar sized V-twin engine, but they're going to feel very, very different. If you ride something like a, a V7 or anything in the Moto Guzzi line that has a transverse V-twin, you're going to feel a very different way that the torque pulls on the motorcycle. For example, I used to ride a lot of them, especially like I spent a lot of time on, a, on an old 1100 Breva. When you would stop at a light or at low speeds and you would rev the engine, you would actually feel the motorcycle torquing kind of to the side because of the way the engine is mounted, which is something you're not going to get in most standard, you know, longitudinally mounted V-twins because the engine is mounted in line with the motorcycle and in line with the rider. So if you have torque, depending on how the engine is leaning and how it's set up and how the angle is, it's either going to torque more forward or more to the rear. And different ways of engineering on different motorcycles can change whether or not you really feel that more or less. But with a transverse mounted V-twin, you are going to feel some of that torquing. It's not necessarily a bad thing and it never gave me any problems, but it was very interesting and it created a little bit more of a kind of an interesting character to the overall ride of the motorcycle. One of the reasons I like V7s and I kind of like Moto Guzzi's in general, especially like that 1100 Breva that I rode, is it's just a very character filled motorcycle for lack of a better explanation. There's not really anything that's better or worse than a lot of other bikes, but it just has a completely different character. And if you ride a transverse V-twin, you're either going to love it or you're really, really, really not going to like it. Also in my experience, especially for an overhead cam V-twin, the transverse mounted ones seem to have a little bit more of a kind of a rough and visceral feeling to them, while at the same time not feeling like they're not smooth. Like they feel smooth enough where it's not going to bother you, but they have just a little bit more of an interesting growl and grip and just visceral feeling to them that I actually really, really enjoy. I'm a big fan of parallel twins a lot of times myself, obviously, case in point, but I have owned a lot of V-twin motorcycles of different types, as I keep mentioning the Breva that I spent a lot of time on as well, and that was back in the day, that was probably a 2006 Breva or something like that, 1100. But the moral of the story is, whereas the V-twin, transverse V-twin, longitudinal, you know, your standard longitudinal V-twin or a transverse V-twin, they are mounted differently in the frame. It does produce a little bit of a different engine character when revving, when riding, and the overall feel of the motorcycle. They are both good designs, there's nothing inherently wrong with either one of them. They're just different. And I would strongly encourage anyone making this comparison to ride a similar motorcycle of both. And obviously the Moto Guzzi, Moto Guzzi, is gonna be the most easy way to ride a transverse V-twin. There are some others out there from some smaller, more niche companies that make really cool custom and more expensive stuff. But the Guzzi or Guzzi is going to be the most common one you're gonna find. I would highly encourage you to ride both of them because it's very difficult in a video to describe the difference in the way they feel, but that kind of side torquey, more visceral feel can be really cool and might be exactly what fits your motorcycle soul. So go try one. You're gonna know right away whether you love it or whether you just wanna stick with your more traditional longitudinal V-twin engines, okay? I hope that kind of cleared it up for everybody. I know it wasn't a super in-depth technical video, but I feel like most of the time, most of you don't care about the real specific deep engineering stuff behind this. You just wanna know the overall broad picture kind of basics of how this stuff works. And then I highly encourage you to figure the rest out for yourself by riding and sitting on these motorcycles and trying them out. Let me know if you guys have any more questions on this or if I need to go any deeper on it. I just wanted to answer that basic question kind of in the most concise way possible. Also, let me know if I do need to do another parallel versus boxer twin engine video on top of the one I already did with the V versus parallel versus boxer, you know, in relation to the Royal Enfield. As always, guys, ride safe. Have a great day. I'm Alex. Peace.